morning. Sorry for those of you who uh, got dizzy with the technical hiccup this morning. Let's worship the Lord. O oh Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to, to the, the Father, and to the, the Son, Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness Feed 
up with good pasture. And on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land. And on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Peter chapter 2. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that he might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a higher hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired man and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's simple, but it's not easy. This can be applied to most worthwhile pursuits in life, and it can be applied to today's lesson from the Holy Gospel. If you want to get into shape, it's simple. Lift heavy things, move more, eat less. Easier said than done. If you want to invest more, it's simple. Spend less money, take the savings, and invest it. If you want to live a life with which God is pleased, then it's simple. He or she, listen to the voice of your good shepherd. It's simple, but 
But it's not easy. And it's not easy, not because the law of God, the, the words of God, the demands of God are so difficult or so hard to understand. It's not easy because we make it hard. Anytime someone has a goal of doing something that is really simple, all sorts of experts crop up to teach them a more complicated way to do it. So someone comes up with a complicated workout or a complicated meal plan that's supposed to let you eat whatever you want and still lose weight. someone comes up with a get-rich-quick scheme that will save you money and get you retired faster. But of course it's going to cost a certain amount up front to get in on the secret. Most of the time we recognize these things as scams. Except, of course, the ones we buy into. We're far more susceptible, I fear, to the spiritual scams. Because what does it mean to live as a child of God? It's really very simple. Listen to his word and keep it. Obey it. Obey comes from two words in Greek. One is ob, which means under, preposition, and adere means to hear. So to place yourself under what is heard. To submit to the word. To listen to his word and recognize that it is good and wholesome and true. And it's not an imposition on you, but it is the very thing you were made for, the very thing that is meant to give you the greatest joy, the greatest fulfillment, the greatest blessings. And that's all right when we like the word. Not so much when we don't. It's simple, but it's not easy. There's a war going on inside every Christian's heart. Sometimes subtle, sometimes obvious, sometimes quiet, sometimes raging. Sometimes this battle looks like the struggle against some secret gnawing temptation. Sometimes it is apathy toward the things of God. Sometimes it's in loving the approval of men and hating that word of God which sets us apart from or against our neighbor. The wolf is clever and he is dangerous, and we cannot stand against him. They him we just say a little flaw, beautiful. I love its placement in the hymnal, placed at hymn number 666. The number of the beast, people get all sorts of superstitions about it. And we say we are not afraid of the enemy. We are not afraid of the devil. O little flock, fear not the foe. And yet, we have no reason to be confident that we can stand against him, that we can do anything against him. Good job. 
shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. Not only for the good and obedient sheep, but for the reckless, stupid sheep who love to wander. The sheep cannot make the devil flee. The wolves cannot, or the sheep cannot make the wolf flee. The wolf is not afraid of them. The devil is not afraid of us Christians. But he is terrified of our good shepherd. The epistle of St. James makes this point. Now they're trying to make a different point and they do that very well. The, the deal is, he's dealing with some people who are self-satisfied in their minimalist faith. They say, well, look, we believe there's one God just like you. That's enough. And St. James says, you believe there's one God? Good! Even the demons believe that. And they tremble. Now, I love that whole verse, but I want to focus especially right now on the fact that the demons are afraid. Not of us, but of the one who guards us, of the good shepherd who watches over us with rod and staff. Our God is greater than all that stands against us. Our God is greater than everything which threatens and alarms us. Our God is greater than all of these things. Our God makes us lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside still waters. He leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And so, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil. For he is with us. And his rod and his staff, which terrify the devil and his angels, are comforts to us. He prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies, anoints our heads with oil, and fills our cups to overflowing. simple. We live without fear because we trust the word. We trust the voice of our good shepherd. Now I want to warn against a danger here. I talked about the, it being simple and sometimes what we think we mean when something is simple is that it can be reduced. The simplicity of God's word is mistaken for our ability to dispose of parts of God's word. Our ability to find a core essential truth and discard all the rest. It's as though we were to say that the sheep listen to the voice of their good shepherd when he tells them where to drink water, but he does not listen, they do not listen to their good shepherd when he tells them go into the sheep pen at night. To say that sheep listen to the voice of their shepherd is not to say that we are to listen to only the parts of the voice of our shepherd that tell us what we want to hear. It's not to say that we figure out the bare minimum syllables we must listen to in order to call ourselves Christians. That we know that what the shepherd tells us is good, and it is for our good. It is good because he is good. It is good because he lays down his life for the sheep. We know that no word that proceeds from the mouth of God can be untrue or can be bad. We serve a God 
who served us, who suffered for us, leaving us an example so that we might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justice. <laughs> Some Sundays, and this is one of them, I struggle with whether there's any point to a sermon. The scripture lessons seem to preach themselves. And in a certain sense, all the lessons do that. Some of them are a little harder to understand, but the Bible is just so clear. pastor is not called to be creative in the preaching text. He's not called to be the good shepherd. His words are not so trustworthy as that. He is instead the under shepherd. The one who does as the good shepherd directs. The one who directs the sheep Toward what the Good Shepherd says. We trust the Shepherd, and we trust the ones He sends because they speak in the same words He gives us. He Himself bore our sins in His body that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. By his wounds the devil is driven away. By his wounds earth has nothing left to threaten you with. Nothing left to alarm you. We were straying like sheep, but we have now been returned to the shepherd and overseer of our souls. times have challenged all of us. They have forced on us in some ways a simpler, quieter life than we would normally like. They have brought us great evil. To my mind, nothing more evil, nothing more terrible than the fact that I am preaching right now to a mostly empty church and a smart club. I pray that we may recognize how that the forceful quieting of our social schedule has taught us to value one another, to value that time at home with just our family, to value the gathering together that I pray will resume here very Until that time, O little flock, fear not the foe. But instead, remember your shepherd. He has borne your sins and carried off your transgressions. He guards and defends you from all evil. And afterward, he will bring you to glory. In the name of Jesus. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people rescue from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness, and eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that we turn from our wickedness and live. Graciously behold your people who plead to you and spare us. Withdraw the scourge of your wrath be moved in mercy to turn away this pestilence from us. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant us this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your government, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Oh, see.